Hey, yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Game Builder Garage. It's a game where you build games. It's supposed to be a really good intro to programming. You just build. You just build. So if you like Mario Maker, you'll probably like this too. You just build. Move, jump, grab the apple. Hey, it looks like you need some help. Well, I mean, like, I was... I should introduce myself. You can call me Bob. Let me just say I understand your frustration. You can't finish a simple game, right? Listen, listen, it's not my fault. <laughs> you can't jump by pressing B, so you can't reach that apple. You're right. In situations like this, I like to say, don't get mad, get programming. We need to do a deep dive into this game to wrap things up. We need to peek behind the curtain. So uh, why don't we do that right now? Welcome to the inside of the game, Feeny. These things are called Nodon. There are all kinds of different Nodon living inside your Nintendo Switch console. If you call up Nodon to this here program screen, then connect them together, and pow, you're actually altering the game's programming. All we need to do is make it so pressing B lets you jump. See this output port on this button Nodon? Just connect it to the jump port on the person Nodon. No, I want I wanted to do action. I want to put another button in. And presto, we've made it so pressing B makes the character jump. I can jump! Shall I look I programmed? I programmed! Let's go. I want Bob for Smash. I think you might have a real knack for this, Feeny. You say that to everyone, Bob. So how about it? Do you feel like taking some of Bob's patented interactive lessons? Yes. We'll be making seven games in these interactive lessons. In the first lesson, we'll make Tag Showdown, which is just a simple game of tag. In lesson seven, we'll make the 3D action game Super Person World. I want to name him... Mario. Feeny? My name's Alice. So, not Bob. He's the excitable one you already met. I look similar, but I'm Alice. Feeny, you know how you just got that game to work just now? Yeah. Be honest, you don't really get what made it work, right? <laughs> but you know, if you're going to make your own game, you'll need to understand which mechanisms do what. All right. Mysterious checkpoint appeared. Make the person jump. Thanks for stopping by, Feeny. Just in case you forgot, I'm Alice. It's been four seconds, Alice. And this here is a checkpoint. The idea is to test whether you really know your programming stuff and how do we test? With a puzzle. I didn't study for this test. Here we have the person object. Try pressing B. The person jump. But what made the person jump exactly? Take note of the position of the person node on on the program screen here. The location of the person node on determines the location of the person on the game screen. Grab the person node on and drag it over to the blue frame. Let's go to the game screen and take a look. Nice. I'm connected to the button node on, see? These lines here represent the connections. And when B is pressed, the button node on sends a signal from its output port. So far, I mean, like, obviously we've only done two things in this, but I feel like it's a really good intro to programming for kids. And, you know, people like myself who have a short attention span and... I used to do IT and programming is one of those things where it was just like, I don't even want to touch it because it's boring and not fun. <laughs> I didn't get into programming, but this game, this game is a really good intro to programming for kids and people like me who just never really got into programming. Feeny, welcome to the puzzles. To clear the puzzle, you need to make the person collect the apple. As things are, there's nothing you can do to make the person move. The only way you're permitted to solve this particular problem is by connecting the button node on and the person node on. Yo, spoilers. I wanted to, how are you gonna expect me to solve the puzzle if you just tell me how to solve the puzzle? That's not, where's my critical thinking? Okay, so I connected it to action. Okay, chat, let's try and cheese it. Okay, what if we only do like one direction? Hold on. How do I make him go back? That's interesting. Clear! All right, tag showdown. It's about 40 minutes. 
Oh wow, this is a, we got a roadmap here. Look at that. Step one, adding player controls. We're diving in. You're going to make your very first game. Tag showdown. <gasps> what do the balls do? In this game, a tagger will chase after a runner while dodging a torrent of rolling balls. Sounds fun already, right? First, let's get our player character up and running. For that, we'll need to call a person node on. Select objects. And then characters? I wanna put a, I wanna put a UFO. Oh, I wanna put a UFO in my thing. If we wanna move the player with L, we'll need to call on the stick node on. So go to input, stick movement. Oh, L and R? Select left, right. Boing. You wanna see my troll? Well, let me troll. <laughs> hey, Sticky, time to do what you do best. Amazing, our player character is moving with L. Wouldn't it be good if a person could jump when a button is pressed? Next, button press. Finally, select a D. Yo, ah, if it ain't my pal Feeny. If buttons are getting bashed, I got it covered. I'll put you over here, sir. And link it. I kind of wanted the A button to be jump. He kind of jumps like, um, Arthur from uh, Super Ghouls and Ghosts. You've cleared step one. I'm a programmer now. Let's heck and go. This time around, we'll be building the floor and walls that set the stage for our game of tag. We need to decide where we're going to put the entire level. How about this space up here? That should do. I'm glad that's... <laughs> I'm glad that's settled. Yes, we, we got that together. Objects. Game screen camera game screen hello darlings i must say you're looking radiant today whatever iframe will appear vividly and thrillingly on the game screen let's make this game screen bigger okay now let's take a look You'll notice that our player character is nowhere to be seen. You see, over on the program screen, the person node on isn't surrounded by the game screen node on. Okay, then let's move the person node on. Okay. Wonderful. Now the person is in the limelight. The camera loves you, darling. Be sure to get my good side. Now we see the person reflected on the game screen. Yikes, but not for long. The obvious solution is a floor, of course. We will, of course, need an object node on to make the floor. Go to objects. Simple objects. Lastly, select box. I want to put it on a sphere! True to their name, object node on are node on that make objects appear on the game screen. Well, he's not wrong. Okay. Okay, to the game screen. Oh, sorry, I should mention with nothing to keep them up, objects just drop right out of the screen. Okay, let's head back and fix it so it doesn't fall out. First, select the object node on. Open the settings screen. Oh, the settings screen is where you can make all kinds of changes to a node on. Now, disable options movable, destructible, and destructive. But I want destructive. Head over to the game screen. Ta-da! I made him stand! Perfect! The object is staying where it should. The person isn't falling out of the screen either. Wanna bet? Head back to the program screen. We can adjust the size. Drag this icon so it's the same size and shape as a blue frame. Perfect. The floor is doing its floor thing, but its color is kind of plain, right? Let's see if we can change the color too. Alright, we'll select it. Settings, color, <gasps> I choose brown. They knew, they knew what I wanted. Oh, it's beautiful. 
Now the floor is brown. Just like with the floor, we'll need to make use of object node on to create the walls. Calling up more object node on, changing the settings again. Sounds like hard work, right? So let's save ourselves some work and just copy the floor to make the walls. Wow. I can be a wall, no problem. Now we change its height and width. We'll make a copy. Drag it over to the other edge. Ta-da. <gasps> I can, he can wall jump. I hereby declare step two complete. I'm a uh, programming expert now, so making platforms. Okay, time to continue programming our game of tag. Does this place seem a little small for a game of tag, maybe? You could fiddle, ar fiddle around with the walls and floor to make them a bit bigger. Or you could just make the person smaller. This will have the same effect as making the level bigger. And shrink him down. Let's take a look. Ah, look at how little he is. He's so slow now. This is where we'll liven things up by placing a whole bunch of platforms. Start by selecting the object node on that's making our floor and copy it. Mm -hmm. And adjust the new node on so that it's about the same size as the blue frame. Now take it over to the blue frame. Take a look. I made this chat. I made this. I think you're ready to try making a sloping platform. Select the object, copy. Rotate it so it's on an angle. Ah. Uh -huh. Perfect fit. Now we have two sloping platforms. Look at that chat. Next, let's add some slopes in the bottom corners. Copy. Okay. Nice. Nice. Perfect. Oh, look at that. Wow, look at this chat. I made a slope. Wow, this is looking pretty great. Oh, it's a big jump. Can I get up there? Ah! Yes. Step three is complete. I like how they cheer for me whenever I do something like that. Let's go. In this step, we're going to create a second person to act as a tagger. Then we'll have a real deal, bona fide, two player game. Before we make our tagger, let's adjust the position of the person a bit. To this side, sir. It's a good idea to move the other node on attached to the person, too. It'll make things a bit easier to understand. Okay? Sticky boy and button boy. We can use another person node on for our tagger. Copy. Okay, so it's interesting that it copies the person node on, but it doesn't copy, like, the stick options, which is fine because that it wouldn't make sense. Okay. Now we have two characters. The person on the left hand side isn't moving. Sorry, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, that works. Since this is a two player game, we'll need to have two players controlling one person each at the same time. First, we'll need to call on the stick node on. Okay, select input. Stick movement. L. And link it up. Out left, right. Good to be collaborating with you, Sticky. Now we'll call up another button node on. Input. Button. L. All right. Okay, and now this one is, uh, oops. Jump. Select the stick node on. Settings. Right stick. And that that's done, you'll be able to control the runner with R instead of L. And this button, settings, and disable B, and enable R. Now you'll be able to jump with R. And let's see. In case you don't know, I am using the um, the pro controller for this, for both sides. Oops, right now the runner and the tagger look exactly the same. That could be a problem. Select the tagger person node on. Settings. Color. Let's make them red. Now this guy. Settings. Color. Blue. Yay! Both characters. Yay, they changed! Try running the tagger. Okay. Yeah. 
Nothing happens. No. Let's make it so the runner is destroyed when they collide with the tiger. First, we select this node on. Destructive. Okay. Settings. Okay, now if the tiger comes into contact with the runner, the runner will be a smash to smithereens! I feel like we've put a lot of a lot of hard work into this. That was so cool! We made it so that the tiger can destroy the runner. But it seems a little bit one-sided at the moment, don't you think? The tiger kind of has an advantage. So in the next step, we'll be adding in a feature to even up the odds a bit. All right, unleashing the balls. How about if we make things more interesting by adding some rolling balls to the level? And what if the balls can destroy both the runner and the tiger? The rolling balls. We'll need a new type of node on, a launch object node on. Objects. Launch, destroy, attract? No, I want destroy object. Launch 10 objects. Go, oh, who's calling me? All right, let's, let's put them up here. Okay. Oh, God, he's throwing balls. Ah! Destructibles. That's real cool. The balls may be a bit too big, no? No, I think they're fine. And shrink it. Okay. Ah! Let's put an extra platform above our runner and tiger. Copy. Move. Tilt. Copy. Move. Tilt. Good job, let's go. They've got a little shelter from the torrent. A little, not a whole lot. I think the torrent is a bit too powerful, right? The balls aren't rolling right, are they? I thought they were great. Let's check out this guy. Settings. Launch speed. Four. Oh, that's too slow. See how each ball breaks when it hits the next one? Looks like we'll need to make the interval between each ball launch a bit longer, right? Settings. Launch interval to seven. Oh, there we go. With that fixed, we've got the balls rolling the way we want them to, do we? Ah! I bet you're thinking we need some rolling balls over the other side now, am I right? Copy. Drag you over here. Time to set it so that the balls come out the left side. Settings. Select the launch direction. Oh. Okay, this way. Wait for it. <laughs> that was amazing. Let's fix it so that the tiger breaks. All right. Settings. Destructible. Close. Now try walking the tiger into a ball. I want to hold on. I got to see. Uh, okay, that still works. Now he's dead. Step five is clear. I learned how to launch balls. Step six of seven. We're on step six. This time we're going to make it a little bit easier to play. You could say we're adding a quality of life upgrade. Now, if the tiger or the runner breaks, the player needs to press the retry button themselves to play it. It seems like a lot of hard work when you're supposed to be having fun, don't you think? Yes. To make life easier, how about we add an automatic retry to the game? If the tiger or the runner breaks, a retry will be triggered. First, we need to call a note on that watches out for things breaking, namely the object break note on. All right, select input, state change, Object break. Hi, honey. Something I can help you with? Don't mind if I do. Okay. Check what? Screen is where you can set which breakages the object break note on watches out for. Disable box, cylinder, and sphere. And then enable person. I'll keep a lookout for a person breaking. Next, we'll need another note on that makes... Okay, okay. Automatic retry. The retry node on. Output. Retry. Retry game. Oh, if only I had my time to do over again. Yo, is this an old man node on? 
you go over here, sir. We'll link it. Okay, so when a person breaks, we retry. Game will restart every time a character is destroyed. Let's check it. Okay. As you saw, if one of the characters is destroyed, the game automatically restarts. But don't you think the interval between the character breaking and the retry is a little short, maybe? All right, extend the interval. Select the connection. Delete the connection. That's where we'll call up a timer node on. Oh my God. Middle. Timer. All right, connect. Got. Uh-huh. Now we'll have a longer interval between a character breaking and the retry. I smashed them both. There's a longer interval between the breakage and the retry now, see? Now players will have a little breathing room between matches. They get like a whole second. Step six is complete. In the final step, I'll show you how to add some Feeny magic to your game. So next, we'll harness your inspiration and creativity to change the color of the level. Are you ready for that? Yes. We'll select this, okay. Settings. We don't want, I don't want this one to be brown. How about making it black instead? Wow, look at that. It's your time to shine, Feeny. Run wild with a rainbow of color. Light blue. Blue. Uh, purple. I want this one pink. Red. I want a lot of purple. This one also purple. The walls will be white. Uh, what color do you know what? I'm gonna make the balls green. Done! Yes! Okay, let's take a look. This is my game chat. I made this. I picked all the colors out. With that, I can declare that development of this game is complete! I made a game! DLC one next week for first game of screen. Thank you! Oh, I've, I need the microtransactions! Ugh. Finishing touches. Seven. Game complete! Yo, look. My name's in the credits. Edit game title. Perfect. Play my game! <laughs> Oops. Uh, that's my game code. Luigi goes to Burger King. If you die, press reset button because I'm too lazy to code it. <laughs> Oops, I broke the grass. game dude what happens dude the car is just gone <laughs> oh god this is so good King. <laughs> <laughs> 